if I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a, it's not a request. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, doing things a little bit differently this evening, starting off with seeing my face. Just checking everything out. Just thought I would drop by um, in this fashion just to uh, just to get things started. But I'm looking forward to tonight. I know I've been a little bit uh, missing. Hey, stunning and brave Megatron. I know I've been kind of missing in action for a little while on Thursday evenings. And a lot has just been going on. A lot of things have been changing and becoming a little bit more complicated in my life. And so... Um, <laughs> and I don't want to, hey, Tara Crystal, um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to miss out and I don't want to skimp out on you guys here on YouTube. I worked really hard to try to create, you know, a uh, creative vibe and atmosphere and try to reach out and meet with people and we just hang. And I love the fact that we have been creating our own fantasy world here um, on Thursday nights. And uh, if you haven't seen some of the previous episodes, man, you should. It's so much fun. And if not, you should definitely um, come hang out on Thursdays. And I try to. I try to post in the community chat um, that I'm going to be going live. And I did not do that for today. But hopefully people got the notification early of the video being tonight. But I'm excited to continue. I've got a really strange creature ready to go for us this evening, okay? And I, what I love most... What I love most is the fact that um, you guys give me input along the way, right? So it's not just me creating these things. Yes, I'm drawing them, of course, but having your guys' ideas being sent to me um, through the chat is fantastic and giving me some great ideas. I love it so much. I really do. I appreciate it and I love it so much. And so, I mean, we've created some different kinds of dragons along the way and we've given them names and they have backstories. And that's the best part because I can't wait to see what might happen, honestly. Can't wait to see what just might happen at the end of this this journey of filling, trying to fill up this book, right, um, with fantasy creatures. And I can't wait to get to the maps part. We're going to, um, we're also going to be creating some maps. We're going to do some world building, right? And I'm just kind of clicking and looking at some stuff here. Um, so that part I'm really excited for. I don't know quite when we're going to do that. I want to do that soon because I really enjoy creating the creatures. And so we're going to try to create like a wide variety of different kind of creatures, create some backstories of where they belong, um, you know, what kind of territory they live in and everything like that. And uh, yeah, hey, absolutely. Hey, got to help your mom, you know. Uh, absolutely. Moms are wonderful. They deserve our help. They've done so much for us. But um Where's I going with all of that? Oh, is that, uh, <laughs> so, um, let me just, I, 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 I totally, it's been a little while. Let me type this in here as I continue. Oh, <laughs> the question mark. But anyway, so let me post that up in there just because, you know, you got to, you got to do it. But anyway, um, so we, we have been just creating a fantastic world and I can't wait to actually get to the world building as far as uh, maybe cities and landscapes and stuff like that. And then we also created that Cairo Panthera. I have loved the journey of Carl and Guts. Okay. If anybody's familiar with Carl and Guts, um, that is probably one of the weirdest but most awesome stories, uh, characters that I have ever worked on in my life and that you guys have helped me out with. I can't uh, wait to do more with Carl and with Guts, honestly. I really do. I would love to do so much more with these two characters <clears throat> in the world that we're making. And uh, my laptop has become unplugged. Let's see if we can fix this. So many things, but hey, Dr. Rachel, 
Yeah, so I have just been super excited to create these fantasy worlds with you guys, and we're going to continue on with that tonight. I was telling you a little while ago that I wanted to merge a duck with something, and I couldn't find all the information of what you guys gave me some really awesome ideas, and I did say something about tiger and just too many. I, I needed a vision, and so I did, and so tonight, tonight, we are going to be merging a duck with two other creatures. And of course, as the conversation unfolds, there might be some more added to it, but I can't wait to get started. So if you bear with me for just a second, I'm going to shut down the screen so I can replace or uh, reposition my camera. And we are going to get started creating this, uh, this brand new creature. And we're going to try to figure out a name for it, kind of figure out some backstory for where it might live and everything. And hey, Holocron Library, Fox, a duck and a panda, that would be cute. But no, no, go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and like <clears throat> put this down, but go ahead and be thinking. Go ahead and be thinking of what kind of creatures I have been mixing with a duck. And depending on what you put in there, don't feel like anything is silly or stupid because of the fact that, um, because of the fact that I might take those ideas and put into a different animal. Okay. So hold on for just a second. I'm going to mute things and, uh, Shut this down. Just give me just a couple of seconds. I literally got my book situated over here and we're just going to move over to the other side of the desk. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, Tabitha is just so great. I love her artwork. I wish I could support her and help her in some way. Just let her know that I think what she's doing is great. And I just want to say that I am so glad that that's what you're thinking right now. And if you are looking for ways to support me and my channel, there are a couple of links in the description box below. You can check out my Patreon page where you can get exclusive behind the scenes footage and pictures of what I'm working on, my works in progress. You can also check out my Etsy shop where you can purchase some of my art pieces that I have made. Or if you just want to make a one-time donation, you can click on my PayPal link because maybe you just have a bunch of money sitting around and you just don't know what to do with it. And you think, man, she looks hungry. Let's let her grab a slice of pizza this weekend. I would appreciate it. But most importantly, if you could leave me a like, that would be fantastic. And if you're new here and you like what you see, just simply subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get updated on all of my upcoming videos. Now, on with the show. Okay, all right, so I couldn't quite see, but here we go. This is what I've got so far. Let me position the, the stuff. Oh, well, okay, great, now I got, let me see if I can move these lights around. Sorry about that. I'm not actually able to see the camera. Um, there we go. go get a little bit brighter let me move things around sorry about that guys i'm working on it i'm working on it Let's see if we can't i need this really overhead <laughs> i've got this little mini light that i'm working with and uh let's see if i can to work with this uh-oh now we're There we go. Hopefully that works a little bit better. Let me see that. So you see what we've got here? Any guesses as to what animal I've merged this with? Any guesses? So we can clearly see the... We can already see the duck portion of it, I'm sure. I'm sure you can kind of figure that out already. Okay. 
But I decided to mix a duck with a crocodile and a pangolin. I think I'm saying that correctly. Do you guys know what a pangolin is? Just curious. Um, It's such a cute creature. It is a very unusual and unique creature. And I was like, that would be perfect. A walrus now, oh, a duck and a walrus would have been so cool. Why didn't I think of that? But so it's, it's a pangolin. Um, let me find a picture here. Ever seen a creature like this before? Little pangolins, they are wanted for, they're an endangered species and they're wanted for their scales. Do I have an animal wheel that I spin and try to mix? No, I just kind of, I I typed in like rare animals and I just kind of wait to see what might inspire me. So I just thought this would be so cool. An animal wheel would be great though, Rookie Critic. Uh, I agree with Dr. Rachel for sure. So I've got this basic sketch out and I can see it in my head and I'm like, let's see. So my idea is that we've got, you know, like this duck um, face. And sorry, I was looking at something. So I've seen pics of what one before, but I didn't know what it was called. Yeah, yeah. It's it's again, it's not a not a creature that a lot of people are familiar with. And um, so we're having like a duck face, and I thought it'd be cute to have like that duck plumage, like the fuzzy feather face that goes into these scales. Maybe like a crocodile belly, crocodile hands. I say hands, but like feet. And just kind of mix it and merge it and see what happens. I might give him little flipper feet. Like, so that way, maybe it's like he has, you know, more um, claws in the front. But we'll we'll see. Let's see. I'll I'll start. I'm going to start here with the, uh, I don't know why, but I feel like starting here with the claws. Maybe we'll make them really long. I'd love the idea of him being really creepy, but cute. Um, a croco duck. <gasps> a croco duck. Let's see. I love that. A croco duck. Creating our own little Pokemon. Let's see. Where is my sharpener? I've, I've lost my sharpener. Oh, but I love a croco duck. Is there some way? Oh man, is there some way we can Latinize that up though? Croco duck sounds good though. I love that. Thank you for that suggestion. A croco ducklin. <laughs> I like that too. Let's see. Um, yeah, sorry about the, uh, let's see. Trying to see if that makes it better. It's kind of... Just have to turn my head more. But, yeah, those are some really great suggestions. Let's see. Yeah, I like the idea of kind of like a misunderstood creature, right? So it's kind of cute, kind of savage. Very, I I like, I was, when I was sketching this out, I liked the idea of having some um, very flexible arms. Um, 
um, like especially in the uh, hand area. I don't know why. Couldn't say. Couldn't say why. But hey, inside the booth, you love that song. What song? And then we've got these folds, kind of like a kind of like a, a chubby little little thing. We'll just sketch this thing out. I love the idea that he, he would be kind of a shy creature, right? Um, because, because again, misunderstood. He's super cute. People look at him, he's like a weird creature. They don't understand him. But that story could always change. You know, again, as we, if you remember, let me bring back, um, I'm not finished coloring Carl, but you remember, that I wrote down a whole bunch of information to get, we both, we all did. I haven't finished coloring guts either, but we created a backstory for Carl. And then same thing for Tuerco. Um, and then our our first one, Feigl, Felgel, our healing dragon. So now we're working on a Croco Duck one. Oh, the chicken woman duck thing. Yeah, if you guys haven't heard that song, that's what I was tight. I was basing this off of. Um, bad lip reading. Have anybody ever heard that? The Star Wars with Yoda, the chicken woman duck thing. If you get mixed a tiger and a panda, you get a tinda. Doesn't that sound like a really cute... Um, Pokemon, a little Tinda. I need to, I need to look up some Latin words because I I like a croco duck one, but I was wondering if maybe it needed needs like. Let's see, I'm messing up the proportions here. A croco duck one. That sounds so good. You guys ever seen a creature like this before? Never seen a. That arm's a little janky. That's okay. We're, we'll fix it as we go. The, the proportions, like doing arms at a different, like a different angle, are kind of rough. So oh, let me use my. Better. But how's everybody's week going? No, it doesn't kill. This is actually uh, this is for burrowing. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, it burrows. It burrows in the mud. But yeah, how's everybody's week going? We're almost to the weekend. We're almost in April, guys. How many of you actually? do April Fool's Day jokes. I'm curious. Does everybody just kind of think it's kind of juvenile? Is anybody really into that anymore? I mean, when I was a kid, you know, did stuff like that, but does anybody really do anything like that anymore? Is it still observed? A quackadile. Oh, stunning and brave Megatron. I love the way that's spelled. Maybe. Oh, maybe we could mix quackadile with croco ducklin somehow. Like quack, uh, quacko ducklin. <laughs> no, that's too much of a duck influence. I love the way that that's spelled, though. I always thought of it as juvenile, even as a child. Yeah, I mean. I do love the way that's spelled, though. But, I mean, when we were at church and stuff like that, we would um, have little jokes and stuff. I didn't, I didn't, I was homeschooled for most of my, my academic career there, and so I didn't really partake in April Fool's and stuff like that. Let's see, these pengolins, let me get this. The only ones I enjoy are like the fake YouTube videos or funny posts on social media, says Dr. Rachel. Uh, real life jokes tend to be kind of rich. Yeah. 
yeah, they can often go too far. And I think there's a big difference between pulling a joke, like pranks, jokes, and just laughing at other people, like, like in such a way that is demeaning. You, you know, making people feel bad about themselves or, you know, it just, I don't, I don't like that. Like I've seen where like these dudes, they cause problems. Like they saw where they went, um, they were, they were at Walmart or something like that. And they were dressed up as Walmart employees and they were causing problems and actually trying to cause like racial division in the store and thought it was funny. And that's not funny. You know, with a lot of the issues that are going on in the world, the last thing we need is to make fun and try to get, ignite issues against one another like that. That's not funny. And then they get all upset. There was that other guy that nearly stabbed another person because they wouldn't partake in the joke. And he started threatening him. And he's like, look, dude, I got a knife. And it's like, what an idiot. I'm going to put these little scales here. I really probably should have made them smaller. Yeah. A quap. How do we? Okay, hang on. Quack. Oh, hot. What? <laughs> this is like one of those Mexican god names that I can't pronounce. Quaco hot. Chillin. I mean, that, if I could pronounce, that looks like such a cool name, but I think it's a little too extreme for what we're going for. Hatchling is the name of the baby croc. I mean, it's beautiful looking. I just don't think I could pronounce it. Let me write that down, though. We gotta write these things down. Let's see. Q A C O H C O H where did it go? I lost it. Oh, C O H A T Chillin. A T or Killin. Man. Hey, hello, John Thomas. Welcome, welcome. We are creating a, a strange creature that is a. I don't know if you've been here the whole time or not. But uh, we are creating a creature that is have part duck, part pangolin, and part crocodile. I agree. There's some pranks that cause actual problems or simply cruel. Yes. Even good nature humor can go wrong if you do it to the wrong person. I've been on the receiving end of a joke after a very long day and did not find it funny. Yeah, you need to, you need to also know your audience. Like you were saying, if you've had a long day, the last thing you want is for someone to, you know, make make your day even worse. Uh, I, I saw another video, some guy uh, pretending to be one of those, um, what are they called? The people that go around looking at, um, where the, the ticket people, what are they called? The ticket maids or meter maids, but the dude version of that, whatever there is. And it was the end of this woman's day, and she's like, what am I getting a ticket for? And he comes up with some excuse, and she's like, I'm not, I, there is no reason for me to have this ticket. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry, but this is my job. And she, she went into it, and she's like, I have no problem fighting you. Like, who is your superior? What is the purpose of this? And, and eventually, you know, it came out to be nothing, but that's not funny. That could potentially ruin somebody's day. And again, it just, it causes chaos. It causes anger. Um, and then don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you make people angry enough when they come at you. We, of course, we need to be in control of ourselves and, and learn to calm down. But don't, some people struggle with that. Legitimately struggle with that. That's not something to play with. So, yeah, I don't find it funny. Some people actually go to therapy for that. So, yeah, inciting anger is not cool.
I guess there's an argument to be made that you can learn a lot about people by what kind of fools they make of others. Often I didn't like what I saw even when I was not understood. Yeah. A spirit. Hello. Is this creature something you saw in a nightmare? No, it's not. And in fact, I tend to make it look cute, actually. See? No, I actually had a little vision of it. And when I say a vision of it, I'm not talking like, like, you know, I was drinking tea and I looked down in the leaves and I saw the future. But like, artists know, you just, you get this vision in your head and you're like, that's it. That's the picture. This is what I must make. So that's what, this is what I'm seeing with the, uh, this, this, what do we call it? A crocoduck? A quackolin? I'm going to write down all of these. I do like the quackolin. Quackolin. That would be kind of. What do we think about a quackolin? Quackolin. Quack. Um. Am I giving it duck feet? I might. It kind of depends on how this how this rolls. Release the quacken. You knew that was gonna come. Yeah. Poor little guy, he, he, he I, I, I'm trying to figure out how do I make him cute and cuter, and I think he's cute with this little crown thing he's got going on. There you go, you understand, artistic vision, that's right. How is your channel doing, by the way, Dr. Rachel? I haven't been over there yet, Same on me. Lado Gator, that sounds cool. Oh, I'm not, a Dan, I'm not actually drawing the chicken woman duck thing. I just did that in the title because I didn't know what to do. Um, these will start crawling down. I want him to be cute. Hey, Mrs. R2! Long time no see in the chat. Was over just recently at the Rogue Attractions channel. Uh, it's been super slow going. I've been trying to come up with interesting ideas. I just haven't had much time make content because I picked up a second job recently. I, I hear you. I hear you. I've been I've been saying that to other people as well. You know, YouTube has no longer really been the friend of actual creators, at least in the artistic field. And so get some duck eyes look like. Oh no. Um I I also, by the way, chose the pangolin and the duck because if you look at a lot of ducks, they have similar color patterns. Uh, is this a duck creature? It is. It is a. We we're thinking of naming it either the croco duck or the the quack. What, what did we say? The quaco. What do we call it? The quaco. The quacolin. So it's a mix between a pangolin, a duck, and a crocodile. Let me write that down. Wow. Let's get some cute eyes. A big part of what makes something look adorable. Their eyes. Should we give him some sad eyes? So, I, he will kind of look kind of creepy. Creepy because of the fact that he, he doesn't have much of a neck. I kind of just wanted him to be like chubby. I don't want him to look like Igor or anything like that. But just some really some really cute chubby teeth. Of course if I give him really large dark eyes then he kind of looks soulless. Poor thing. Oh good, I found my
That's kind of a snarky thing to see. All Crown Library Fox, I do actually use um, photo references, but I like to try to explore, or I like to, I, I, I like to try to use photo references and then expand on them. You know, this is just a rough, rough uh, drawing of it. I um, then just try to go in and we fill in the details. And so, photo reference, they're just meant to be references. I think you know, I, I'm sure you know that. They're just meant to be references to gain ideas from. And, and, I think because we do, we tend to associate, you know, like this hunch, hunch kind of uh, body, you know, as I'm trying to make them a little bit timid too. There are some creatures out there that people are really afraid of, but they're actually super cute. Like I think bats are cute. Not all of them, but a lot of them are super cute. And sometimes proportions, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best artist in the world. I'm still learning how to do angles and things like that of of everything. And I wonder I wonder if part of it is like if his bill is not long enough. That might be it too. Like it might be too short so it looks too much like a nose. Let's see. Let me go. Let me kind of do that. Oh, well, you know, that's, again, we're just kind of exploring. Everything can be erased. And um, for the claws, I'm just kind of, for the claws in particular, I'm just kind of going, I'm just going off of imagination and uh, memory. Let's see. I'm not good at painting, painting, drawing things as at an angle. See, that's too much of an angle. See, now it needs, because now it's it's reading it like it's this way rather than this way. And that's something I do struggle with. Um, and I know a lot of that has to do with, like, shadowing. So maybe I do need to stick with... <laughs> Poor little guy. But maybe he needs a really big build because, again, he burrows. I think that's what I like it. He... What kind of a name would this little creature have? We gave we gave our Cairo Panthera a very basic name. Even Carl. Ah, wearing a cowl. No, he's it's, it's a fantasy creature, but I'm trying to keep it in the in the animal world. I'm not necessarily doing red wall creatures where um, they wear clothing. But I'd really I'd love I'm not very good with expressions either. That's something else that I'm learning. I'm like how to place um, I, I'm not very, very good with like the placement of the muscles and stuff like that to figure out what exactly would make it look. I'm, I'm, again, we're all learning. And that's what's so cool about being here. You guys help me and challenge me. Maybe this needs to go up a little bit. I don't want him to be cre too creepy. I would love for him to have these creepy hands, but a super cute face. But that might, I might, it might not happen. Let's, let's see. But you know, Carl grew on me and Guts, as much as creepy as Guts was, you know, the parasitic tail that we created in that story. They, they kind of just grew on me as well. See you, Dan. Good night. You draw stick figures. Hey, sometimes stick figures are the best figures.
when in doubt give it anime eyes exactly this is true so true because that just give give him that extra twinkle in the eye but i'm trying to okay so we we try to create these stories right so all right so i've already said that i like the idea um i know one claw is shorter than the other again i'm trying to work with trying to work with the balance there it's, it's hard i know it needs this is wrong here but um but so i like the idea that he does he 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 burrows right in the mud but he's also got these scales um and so like what's so it looks like it looks like what i've done so far with the eyes it kind of they they look like very big kind of glassy eyes right so do we want to make him a character that can't see very well because he lives maybe in the water in the dark places of the water do we want to make him kind of like maybe like an underwater mole kind of thing Maybe that would be the story. And let's see, what's what's some good names that we can come up with for this guy? Uh, I'm trying to think, what kind of name comes to mind with this? Perhaps he sees better underwater. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think he sees better underwater. I don't want to limit him to just the water, right? So, but he he's he's a water creature, but he can come and live on the surface for a while. Fantasy creature, so magic Maven Bob. Is he a Bob? Magic can work though, so he can have some abilities. Don't, don't be afraid of it. Hey, Emily, hello. We are creating some kind of creature. We're not quite positive just what he is yet. He might be a quackolin or a croco duck. We're trying to figure. We're trying to figure out a name for him. What about? What about Marvin? What do we think? Is that too basic? It looks adorable. That's great. He's supposed to kind of be creepy adorable. Does he look like a Marvin? Maybe a Mervin? Marshall? I don't know how to... I'm not really sure how to shape. Oh, he needs a... Oh, I forget. He needs some kind of a nostril thing. Marilyn? Is this female? I kind of see this as a dude. Marion? Marion is, you know, John Wayne. That was his original name, or his real name, wasn't it? Marion? Marion Michael Morris, wasn't that? He looks like an M kind of name. Is he elderly? Oh, that's a very good question. Is he elderly? I would love the idea of making a youthful version of this one day, but I... Yeah, he, maybe he's older. Because the, the, if I ever make a younger one, I wonder if I need... With, Right. Playing around here. I wonder if it looked if he's older because he's got this double chin thing. I can see it in my head. It's just trying to get it on the paper. Uh, 
the Marv, Marvin, Marilyn, Marion, Marshall, Minerva. Oh, it's a good, good magical name, isn't it? Scales on the forehead, yeah. Let's give it some rosy cheeks. the chin under here but that makes him look more human if I do that and I don't like that it looks like he just has a big schnoz it's not what we want poor little guy I'm, I've never drawn a, I'll be honest with you I've never drawn a duck before so something about this is off and I'm just trying to figure out here it looks Marty oh, Marty Roman gods, uh, wisdom, yeah. Maybe it's because it doesn't have a neck. This is what's, what's going on. So I was also going to give it. That's what it was. I was going to give it a, like a crocodile belly. I think this might might help. Let's see. I'm going to give him kind of that crocodile kind of belly. That'll help slim him down a little bit. He's shorter arms, but see if he's a burrower. Um, wouldn't he need Gus? <gasps> he could be a Gus. Right? He could totally be a Gus. What do you guys think? Gus. The Quackolin. Or the Quackolin. And so if he kind of had like these feathers coming down and then had those, those lines that go across the belly. Hey, CD! It kind of looks like a platypus. I'm okay with that because, I mean, a platypus kind of looks, you know, obviously like a duck, so... Yeah, he does kind of look like a plant. Something like this. Paddles. <laughs> Yeah, something is something is off about this. But I again, I, I have to try, you know take my own advice. You can't judge a picture until it's finished, and sometimes it just has a habit of coming together. Oh, maybe he needs maybe he needs some eyelashes. That usually softens the face a little bit. So a duck crocodile pangolin that has eyelashes. <laughs> I don't really, I mean, it's not, you know, he just basically some fur, if you will, around the eye. That kind of keeps the dirt from coming in, maybe? Keeps the dirt from coming in. I see him saying in a Louisiana accent, hey there, name's Gus. Webbed hands instead of the claws. Well, like I said, I just, I thought it would be really cool if he could burrow with these claws. So if I could try to make, hey, Mrs. Cannoli. They're creating weird creatures here. So maybe it's this hunched back thing. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on a second. Kind of help. Yeah. I 
think having this little extra bit over here really helps as well. So we can swim and burrow. Yeah, a mix between. What? Okay. Oh, what am I doing? I, I inverted this. That's not what I meant to do. This is Cannoli. I hope you are doing well, madam. Killing it over there on your podcast. Okay, so let's just go ahead and kind of color these in. These are some little webbed, little webbed hands here. And again, I, I, I think I like the idea of this being a misunderstood creature. You know, it's kind of creepy cute, you know. And uh, I'll start putting in some shadowing here and there just to kind of help us this out doing well I'm glad I'm glad it was a great um, John Wick uh, podcast episode you guys had the other day super fun overall yeah that movie was way over the top but overall I loved it I thought it was fantastic would see it again. Yeah, moles are cute. It just depends on who you talk to, too. Let me sharpen this again. This is how God made the platypus. Yeah, he's looking more like a platypus, isn't he? But again, you know, just taking, like, you've got this giant bill. And, you know, I was thinking of giving him duck feet, so maybe I can try to work on that. Let's see. Um, like, duck feet are really small, but maybe, maybe I could give him, like, really... Let's just try this out. I've never done bird legs either, not really. Let's have a look at some duck feet. And they get pretty skinny, but what if he had some big slappers here? Let's see. Let's just let's just see. Let's get a basic shape going. Play around with. It's not very pretty, but it's, again, we're just kind of figuring out where these things need to go. So then you have the things in the middle. Okay, but it's obviously, of course, I'm drawing from a, uh, from an angle camera and everything, so it's not really straight on. So this needs to go back. I told Cannoli that was a platypus. Uh, yeah, he's a fantasy creature. You know, I mean, let's just be real. Platypuses are very bizarre creatures. Um. They, they are our own real-world Pokemon. Bless their little hearts. They're so cute. Elusive little creatures. I don't mean this looks like a platypus. I just think the platypus was made of an unused parts of other animals. <laughs> this is true seems that way anyway to us. Right? And then we have... Okay, nope, Angles are hard. That's why these sessions are so good. They're really practice drawing sessions for me. Yeah, that's not working because it doesn't... Hey, power 700! Trying to figure out duck legs. Not, not easy. They do lift a little in the back. Alright, we'll, we'll come back to it. See, this here looks a little bit too mammal-like. That's probably another issue.
He's starting to look like a little bit like a rat down here. Oh, what do we got? What is this? this? Is cool though. I love it. I'm okay. Not what I was going for. Not exactly the vision. What I had in my vision, but that's okay. You just go with it, and sometimes it turns out better than what you thought it would. Yes, please be sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying these sessions. You just never know what's going to happen here. And so, okay, all right. So, did we did we decide his name? Are we thinking this is a gust? Um, what are our thoughts? He does look cute. Good. Good. Is it finally coming together? Having a vision and executing the vision are two different things. Absolutely, Dr. Rachel. You feel me? Yeah, I kind of like this little creature as Gus. I really, really do. Gus, Gus. Okay. So if we're cool with Gus. Let's see. Oh, wait, but I've got to make it something a little bit bizarre, right? So we're not going to stick with traditional spelling of gust. No, sir. G-U-S. Gus. <laughs> he looks friendly. Good. He is friendly. He's, he's just misunderstood. Because he lives, okay, so primary lives uh, burrowing. I think he should hide things. I think he should be, these kinds of creatures should be known for hiding things in the mud. Um, he has a sweet face. Good. I think it's the eyelashes. <laughs> um, might need to put some more scales on him. We'll see. Is that an aardvark? <laughs> Does it look like an aardvark to you? Um, Rogue was on his channel not too long ago. Trying to talk about John Travolta, but given that I don't know really much about John Travolta, haven't seen that many of his movies, it was kind of, kind of rough. But, you know, Tom, thanks for having me on. I tried my best. <laughs> He might be a force of lightning. Yeah, I think Gus has a way. Okay. All right. I think that Gus, honestly, has a different way of combat. I think that this is one of those, again, misunderstood, misunder underappreciated creatures. That there, He's got some ability that causes him to be powerful but in a different way he knows how to art out smart creatures with their own powers i think that would be something that would benefit a creature like this i don't think he's a very big cre creature i'm gonna say maybe about the size of a woodchuck and uh, can Tabitha draw unfriendly characters? I think her bright personality makes all of her credits oh thank you i don't well have you seen carl um, he's not really the friendliest one, and he, he's kind of got a bad attitude most days, because he's on the hunt for Mrs. Carl, and he's not doing a great job. Google Translate says, Anatosuchus? Is crocodut in Latin? Really? There's a Latin word for crocodut? Crocoduck? But okay, so I like the idea that this is this is a creature that, yeah, you don't want to mess with it, but you don't really know what it can do. Kind of like in How to Train Your Dragon with the Night Fury a little bit, right? Nobody, everybody feared the Night Fury, but they didn't really know much about it. I'd like it to be that, in a way, it's kind of like that with, with Gus here. He's clever, right? It's not, it's not so much wise as just, uh, I mean, wisdom would be a part of it, but it's just, yeah, it, it's able to use other people's 
arrogance maybe against them. Hey, Brett, how are you? This is Gus. Let me make this a little bit more visible there. This is Gus. We're trying to create his backstory here. Um, I wish I could do the texture of feathers. Um, but yeah, he Gus knows how to handle his own. But people don't know how. People, people don't know how these little creatures are so el elusive. Be they're mysterious. I like the idea that we might not even know everything about Gus. As we might be just trying to figure it out, and it's going to be kind of like, well, we we never really will know because nobody really knows. So he's about a, the size of a woodchuck. I like. That. I think that's a good size for him. They his species likes to hide things in the mud. We gave him kind of glassy eyes um, so he sees better underwater. Um, what else could we... I need to... I really should work on his feet, shouldn't I? And maybe I have some of those... Maybe some of his... Uh, Scales coming down this way. Do not meddle in the affairs of a croco duck, for they are subtle and quick to anger. Is he? Do you think? Do you think he's quick to anger? Maybe, and maybe that's why they're so elusive. Brett, help yourself, man. I don't mind. I love sharing my artwork with everybody. So, okay, some scales. Well, <laughs> that's kind of a lie. Um, I have learned to like sharing my artwork with people. Uh, there we go. I just, I wish that I knew how to make, how to draw this so that it looked more like feathers. Because this is looking more like fur. And I I don't really want him to look like... He's starting to look like a rat. And I don't want that. It might help if I... Once I get his tail on there. To make it look more reptilian. So let's see how I can do these legs. How? Let's see what I can do. I, I'm just going to try something here. I've got an idea. And thank you all for hanging out with me on this nice, uh, well, here it was a nice sunny Thursday. If it, it's, it's dark now, but it was a beautiful day today. And... I thank you for starting, you know, the beginning of the weekend, if you will. Um, kind of, sort of, going into the weekend. Hanging out with me, trying to figure out this creature. I, I'm i creating this world with you guys. And I, I love it, you know? Sometimes we have differences of opinion, and we're trying to figure this out. We have different ideas. And that's all part of the experience. And that's why it's like, this is a... A community of artists and non-artists. Just because you might not be able to draw doesn't mean you don't have good ideas. And so, um, let's see, that didn't work out the way I wanted. So, I'm giving him claws. I'm giving him webbed toes, but I'm giving him short, stubby claws. Because if he's a burrower, but at the same time, he needs to be able to swim rather quickly. See if I gave him some like little ankles here. I wonder if that helps. I just feel like these legs. So he needs he needs like little feathers. But see, this is starting to look more like hair, and I don't <laughs> I don't want that. Hey, you know, we're doing the best that we can. Tabitha can only do so much. Let's 
so let me see here. So if he had a tail that came down, well, I kind of need to do the other foot too, don't I? Oops. Um. Again, going with the angles here, trying to figure that out. See now, <laughs> one side's so short compared to the other. Okay, that sucks. I think this needs to come down. This needs to come down. Poor guys, I think we've got that tweet down. Okay, I I honestly can't wait when we start building the world. So we we're building our creatures right now, right? And basically, the creatures are going to live in different parts of this world that we're going to create, and. We're going to take those ideas and create land. And I, 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 I'm curious to see how well that's going to go over with you guys. Um, this is still not But it's going to be really, um, really fun trying to create those, uh, the land mass and everything like that. I've tried, I've tried giving my hand at, um, map building and stuff like that and it, it's a lot of fun it's, it takes a lot of time but it's a lot of fun it's just a rough idea no, it's, it's just been nice thick tail here I was going to have the tail kind of in the front, but maybe I'll just have it. Aww. It will kind of help, and then if I... It's a mighty thick tail, but I, I think that works. I, I kind of like I like it. A nice fat tail. I think his belly needs to come down a little bit. Maybe he needs a fat, fatter belly. A feathery tail with scales on the inside. I was thinking that, you know, these scales on the top needed to somehow uh, translate onto here. So let's just kind of let's just kind of see what happens. This is going to be fun to try to get the angles just right. We're just going to kind of go with it. We can always clean things up later. I dug a sword. Thank you. 
Good to see you. You totally draw draw some stuff, man. I was talking to somebody just last night and they were saying that, you know, it's been a while since they sketch. And uh, it's it's so worth getting back into drawing. Let's see. And it doesn't take much. You just kind of start sketching and suddenly magic happens. And again, it's not necessarily going to be everything that you thought it was going to be. You know, little Gus here. He's not... He's not exactly how I pictured, but he's not, he's not far off. And I wonder if he just needs some more. I wonder if Gus just needs a couple more scales up top. Maybe I need to... Now, I'm not God. I didn't design all these scales perfectly. I am aware of that. You know, ain't nobody got time for that right now. <laughs> but, uh, I'll get it done then. That is another thing that's kind of difficult to, to do when the body is turning like this. So it's just kind of, I'm just going to kind of try to get the idea of it out right now. And yeah, they're not exactly, it's kind of like flower petals and things like that. They're not always, really perfect. As long as you get that idea of it. If I ever decided to take Gus and do more with them, I would, I'd be more with and careful about placement and stuff like that but um, now I know that the scales on the, his head are definitely more detailed I'll have to go back in we might have to go um, another night and really fill it in but we've got we've got some good stuff going on here with little Gus Gus so I, I'd like to flesh out his, his character a little more but again I do like the idea of him being an elusive creature. Not everybody knows much about him. Misunderstood creature. Kind of cute, kind of savage. Lived up to the duck thing? Well, that's excellent. Yeah, we, we are Quackolin. The pangolin crocodile duck mixture. Out of, I wonder, I just... Bear with me here. <laughs> Should I put giant tooth up there? Does that look ridiculous? <laughs> One nice big crocodile tooth. Let's just see. What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? Did we we leave a little piece of snaggle piece there that kind of helped make him cute um and the shading yeah all the shading in here is going to be you know amplifying all of this phenomenally but i don't know do we do we like this one too? Uh, yeah just this one tooth he i don't you know i think not all of the crackling will have this I think that might just be a signature Gus thing. Oh, I gotta turn this. I want to catch this Pokemon, right? That's that's an awesome compliment. Gus. I feel like Gus would be the kind of creature that, um, if people, if somebody has a responsibility for something. Number one, he doesn't have time for everybody's drama, okay? He is too busy hiding and hoarding whatever it is that he has hidden away in a little cave. I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and say, Quackolin, Quackolin, we're going to make it canon now. 
that they have an inherent desire to build caves of treasure. And so nobody really knows where their caves are and what all they have hidden in there. I want to say that they have a secret ability to um, sniff out magical relics. Okay? And that is what they they hide inside of their caves. Okay? So while he is so busy trying to build his treasure trove, it's possible he might meet our other friends or other creatures along the way. Um, you know, like maybe he ran into Carl and he doesn't have time for Carl's nonsense looking for a mate. He's like, I'm too busy building my treasures. You got your own problems to deal with. And it's not that he's it's not that he's unfriendly. It's more like it's just apathetic, right? He's got his own responsibilities. He's not in charge of your issues. And so carry on, my friend. Like he just keeps to himself, right? I like I, I think that would work. I need to write that down. Let me finish this. Ooh, okay, wait, hang on a second. Maybe I don't want to finish this tale with scale. Let me think about this. Maybe this is like like a like a claw at the end of his tail. What do we think? Should I leave this as like a claw? Like a like a piece of bone. Now, exactly. Gus has his own problems. He can't be, be worrying about what everybody else is doing. I like the idea of this being almost like almost like a useless weapon, right? He doesn't really use it, but it's there if he needs it. A feather tip for an underwater creature, would that help? Well, well let's just leave it there and see what happens. Let me see. Let's think about it. We don't, we don't want to rush just. Okay. See if I remember this. Let me grab this pencil. So Gus is in the back one. So Gus is uh wait. Gus is an apathetic creature. Too busy. Courting, I spelled that right. Courting magical treasures. To worry about other people's problems. I'm going to write the condition of the rest of the world. Remember, this is supposed to be like a field guide, right? Oh, Simon's a great name. Simon would have been a cool game name, but I like I like Gus. I like Gus. Okay, so right, he's so magical treasures. Uh, he's too busy hoarding magical treasures to worry about the condition of the world. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna write down quack. Olins, Quackolins, um, have an inherent nature of seeking and hoarding treasure. Well, magical treasure. Right, they burrow under water in the mud. Looks like a character out of Twi Twilight Princess Moore, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, well, he's, he's pretty cool. We're just creating our little creature here. Um, okay, what else did we say? Um, let's see, inherent nature, just 
seeking and hoarding magical treasure. They burrow in the mud. Um, oh, oh, their eyes. They see better underwater. Anything I'm missing? Anything else to say? Um, let's see where we see something about like anger issues, right? Easily angered? I feel like, okay, so I feel like maybe these creatures are easily angered, but Gus is not, right? Maybe he's different than the rest of the Quacklin. Okay, normally. An easily angered beast. Not what was that? Croc spend hours underwater, so maybe that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he needs a monocle. Give it. Give him some class. Well, remember, I'm trying not to put... Uh, this, I think that's a fantastic idea, being honest. Um, but I, uh, I'm i trying to keep it into, like, if you will, like realistic fantasy creatures and so not putting clothing on the animals. But I love it. Uncle Scrooge would just think, uh, that would be so cute if I just kind uh, of... He would look fancy. Oh, with bow tie and me. Oh, and then I'll just say that something unique to... To Gus, see something unique to Gus is the uh, the saber tooth. <laughs> I mean, you know, humans have gaps in their teeth, and sometimes their teeth grow weird, like you know, up higher and stuff so it only makes sense that sometimes in the in the animal world these kinds of things happen okay so little pudgy creature here what oh what does it very good question. We do need to. We do need to know. That is a very. What does it eat? Question. We need to know. What kind of food would it? Well, I mean, so ducks eat like what? What do ducks eat? Platypus. Platypus dying. What is the plural form of platypus? What do they eat? I want to say this is kind of like a because he is a mix of a crocodile and stuff like that. Uh, John Thomas, thank you so much for being here, my friend. I enjoyed your company as we created this character. Um, you sleep well and go into the weekend with joy, knowing that you have worked hard and uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor for sure. Have a good night for us. Fish. Yeah? I like the idea that Oh, oh, okay. All right. Remember, fantasy world, guys. So what if there's, like, some luminescent algae, okay? And they use the luminescent algae for something. Gosh, this is going to look so fantastic when it's shaded properly. I don't want to rush this. Hey, Cam! Often seen in the wild, floating on its back, eating seeds. Well, okay, he's a he is an elusive creature, though. But maybe if spotted in the wild, can be found uh, eating floating. I love. Can you imagine this little creature just floating on his back, whistling through his one tooth, well, next to his one tooth, singing a song and just popping little, little flower seeds in his mouth. But maybe he collects. Maybe, okay, maybe there's a type of fish in this world. Maybe that's something we need to work on next time. 
Maybe his eyes blow underwater. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so maybe there's a type of fish in this world that lays its eggs onto seaweed underneath the water, of course. And this is the main source of food for this kind of creature because it doesn't exactly have a bunch of teeth to chew, like chomp down on things, but it needs that protein. And because they're going to be little fish eggs, you can just swallow them kind of like seeds. So that, that could be a thing. What do we think about that? Maybe he eats other things, but like maybe maybe the favorite snack, maybe the favorite snack is the uh, the fish eggs that collect on the algae. What do we think? Do we like that? And they glow, and that would give the glow in the eye, so that he can see when he's burrowing in the mud. Do we like this? Do we like this idea? I think that'd be pretty cool. I like that idea. I'll make sure I write it down in the notes. He eats turtles and needs the tooth to crack their shells open. Ooh. Ooh. That's good too. Okay, I like it. I'm writing it down. Alright. Uh they eat they eat fish eggs. Glowing fish eggs. They grow on seaweed. Also, they eat turtles. Okay, so maybe the tooth is not just to gust. Maybe it's a species thing. Steph won't like nobody tell my dirty home. It's just a cycle of life. Don't tell her though. <laughs> They eat turtles. Okay. Maybe we should have mixed this also with an otter because it is looking like he's having fur, but I really like the idea of having feathers. It is really. I don't know how to easily draw. Okay, so we figured out. All right, so here's the thing where does Gus and his pipe, where do they live? Okay, we figured out where he eats and essentially what his occupation is, but where do they live? Do you think that they maybe live um, in the water, but above the water in the roots of trees that grow over riverbanks, maybe? Or do you think that the, he needs to come out of the water every now and then? And like during the evening when it's cooler, um, his body doesn't dry out. So he's able to, maybe something happens to his scales if he's in the water too long. Do you think maybe? By the way, I've got some cool new things coming to the Etsy shop. If you like chibi characters of some of your favorite nerd characters, then they'll be coming. I've got a really awesome, so proud of this new Professor Snape that I've created. And uh, I'm working on some Bellatrix with strange chibis, but I've got the other Harry Potter char characters up and running in the Etsy shop. You can find all of that stuff uh, in the description box. And also you can follow me on Twitch. I'm doing gaming and I'm doing artwork over there as well. Artwork that I'm not doing here. I'm doing on Twitch. Uh, I do, do dragons and devotions on Monday mornings. And uh, that's the only thing I have as a regular schedule. But I also 
Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, my some of my designing for my Super Mario Flamethrower over on Twitch. So if you want to watch me create that um, in the upcoming days, you'll want to follow me over on Twitch. Whole entrance underwater leading to its burrow above the water. I had to read this again. Whole entrance underwater leading to its burrow above the water under the ground. Oh, there's that. I mean, here's the thing. Since Gus has worked so hard, so hard to, you know, should, should he, he, maybe he doesn't live, oh, okay, maybe he doesn't live very close to his burrow, or, yeah, his little, you know, treasure trove, because that would be too dangerous. Maybe he travels there. Well, first he has to go find treasure, right? So that's a whole nother story we'll have to think about, like where he travels to and all of that. I think that would be where his magical abilities must come from. We'll, I'll, we'll flush that out another night, because I don't think we're going to be finishing up with Gus tonight. But I think it would be good if Gus didn't live close to where his treasure is, because that would make it easier for people to find him and steal stuff, right? Uh, Megatron says maybe he lives in a secret cave that he can only access by going underwater through the hole. Yes, I think that would be great. And let's see. Yeah. So he doesn't want to live. So maybe that's part of the elusive creature thing, right? People assume that they're in the water and stuff like that, but maybe they don't know that. So maybe he spends his time and he sleeps on land, kind of like a deception thing, right? Maybe, okay, maybe at the, the foot of trees, like his kind, in, they build like these mounds that they bury themselves in. And because of the, the coloring of the scales, it camouflages them into the dirt and like the grass and the leaves and stuff like that. And so they sleep in these little round, um, I don't know, pods or whatever that they create. And so people think that they're land creatures. Right? Because they don't know. We're, we're the only ones that know. Because we're making his story. Could be a thing you know what is it that the gorillas like they they make those those little circular beds right maybe he does that too but he scratches it up with and you know uses his claws kind of um do that something third off so his magical abilities right is when sleeps on me That would actually really be great because of, you know, his eyesight being seeing better in the dark. Okay, so hear me out. And then we'll probably have to call the quits for this evening. Because I, I want to make sure I do this properly. But, okay. Magical ability. He's looking for uh, a nocturnal creature. I like the idea of us not fully knowing everything about Gus. So maybe he is. Maybe he's not. Maybe he wants us to think that he is. But we'll never actually know. So we're both right. <laughs> it's Schrodinger's cat. But um, so... Where does he find these treasures? How does he find them? So not not all treasures, you know, not all treasures are on land, right? Or excuse me, not all treasures are on land, not all treasures are on water. I like the idea that he'd be able to go anywhere and do that. So I don't want to make it like he can sniff magic out, right? That doesn't make any sense to me. But how would he know how to where to look? He can't really climb too well because of his feet. 
Anthony Kimborough. So I like the idea of going under palaces and stuff like that, but we need something. I don't can he teleport, but only in short distances. Hmm. Maybe with his eyes. Through his eyes, he can use the power. Let me know if this is too crazy, guys. Like, I, I want to know. But, you know, all is fair in love and fantasy, right? But maybe with his eyes, he can use them to use telekinesis, right? His eyes have the ability to basically use the force. And it's almost like his eyes... Hear me out. I know it sounds crazy, but he can use his eyes to essentially sense or smell when magic is nearby. Like, it's like he can see it, sense it, whatever the case might be through his eyes, right? But he can't... Uh, I, I know, right? <laughs> so, that is one of the perks of being, you know, having these eyes, but he can't leave them out in the daytime too long, right? Because it drains the energy, it dries the map, everything like that. So if he happens to be somewhere, he can suddenly see slash smell slash sense through his eyes that there's something with magical powers nearby. And so then when he gets to wherever he's going, when the, the power is stronger, if he, if he concentrates, he kind of goes into like this trance and can look at something. And through the power of his gaze, he can actually bring things toward him. And then he runs away and takes it to his burrow. What do you guys think? Basically using the force through his eyes very different. I kind of like it. Uh, you know, it's not something you would ever suspect. I don't think I've ever in my life heard of any kind of mythical creature or fantasy or sci-fi character being able to do anything like that. And so I think that would be really cool. But I want your guys' opinion. We're making this together. Sensing magic through your eyes, like you can feel it, almost like a, almost like pressure. Like pressure. And it gets, not in a painful way, but it almost like gets tighter or stronger the closer he gets to the source of magic. And people don't understand. Oh, here's the thing. So that would make sense. People don't understand how this creature is able to find so many magical relics. Okay. And so it would make sense that this ridiculous way of finding magic is number one, that they can sense magic. But secondly, is that they can actually uh, draw things to themselves through concentration like that. So... Sounds cool to me. All right, we'll do it. I've only got a little bit of space left here, so we're just gonna. Magic. Uh, this is my, like, one of my favorite my favorite things is creating the backstory. Sense magic in your eyes. See, the feeling gets stronger the closer they get. Then, through the power of concentration.
I almost forgot how to spell that for a second. It's been a little while. Thank you, Holocron. Yeah, he's not quite done yet, but he's he's pretty cool. I've never seen a creature like this before. And I guys, guys, I can't tell you how much it thrills me that I'm able to create my own characters, my own creatures like this. It's been a dream of mine for years that I could take something that is in my head and try to put it on paper. And it's not exactly what I thought, but it's actually pretty close in many regards. And I, of course, like I always say, I'm always learning, always growing. And that's why these, these meetups are so special and so precious to me because we get to do this together. And it's not just me making them. You guys are encouraging. You guys give me some constructive criticism and you give me ideas. And and I love seeing everybody express their creativity. And, and a lot of times, yeah, people are like, well, the best I can do is stick figures. That's totally fine. But you guys have some of the best ideas. And so just because you can't draw doesn't mean you can't help somebody else flush the idea to light. And this is so exciting. And when I look at it in the camera, I'm like, I did that. I made that. I made this ridiculous creature. And then we all came up with a backstory for it. And we just wait till this is all fully done. Uh, Emily, thank you so much. You know, you, we, we made this together. So it's really cool. Um, let's see. To the power of concentration, they can... Uh, do that. And the burrows and hide them away. And we, we filled up like a whole page here of ideas. I love it. Because like I said, this must be like a field guide of creatures that we're discovering. Right? So we're off to a really cool start. And there's such a wide variety that we're creating. Obviously the first two were dragons, but different kinds of dragons, and I uh, can't wait to finish off dress here. And then look at this, look at this book, guys. We, we have a lot that we're gonna be doing. So I don't know what all we're gonna do. We're probably going to cover land, like maps, and then we're probably going to do like gemstones and weapons. Like we're gonna fill this book up with some awesome fantasy characters and creatures. It's going to be, oh, there we go going to be so cool. Um, I'm going to give Gus a little bit of a break here and, and my hand. And I just wanted to say thank you so much, everybody, for um, for hanging out with me. Um, let me see here. Let me readjust some stuff really quickly. Just to be able to properly. Properly say good night and goodbye. This again has been really awesome, super fun, and fantastic. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And uh, look at him one more time. Look at that guy. He's so great. Remember how rough he looked in the beginning? And now he does kind of have a mole kind of body, like an otter kind of body, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. I'll do some research and see if I can figure out how to do some feather-like texture for, for that. But if not... He's still really cool, and he is a, a quackolin or a croco duck. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's kind of like a slur or something. People will call him uh, in his world croco ducks, and it's like, excuse you, sir, quackolin. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys are awesome, and I again appreciate everybody being here. And I hope you have a great rest of the evening and a wonderful weekend. And we'll meet back here. 
um, next Thursday. In the meantime, if you subscribe to the channel, hit like on your way out. But if you subscribe to the channel, if you're new here, um, I'm going to be uploading a video. It was uh, I did some um, art, alternative art for an upcoming comic book that's coming out. If you guys haven't heard of Sketchy Guy, um, Sketchy Guy Nevada, he is an uh, illustrator and he does all kinds of comic books and he asked me if I wanted to do like a variant cover of his upcoming comic book and so I recorded uh, the process and hopefully tomorrow night I will be uploading that and uh, it should be kind of fun it's kind of a simple um, video but it was fun to make fun to edit and it was a very interesting and fun um, TV drawing to do. A lot of action involved in it. It has to do with demon hunters. And that's all I'm going to say. That you can watch the video tomorrow when it comes out and all of that. So, but again, check me out on all my socials and uh, I'll be on Twitch again this weekend at some point. And uh, yeah, thank you all for your support. You really don't know what it means to me. And uh, have if I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a